Hello and welcome to the latest episode of our award-winning MVP The Master's Voice podcast from MediaBrief.com. I'm your host and friend Pavan R. Chawla, founder and editor of MediaBrief.com and I am pleased as punch to announce that my very special, my distinguished guest is someone who is doing some amazing work in the consumer electronics space. Please join me in welcoming Midula Devabhaktani, CMO and co-founder Mivi. Midula, welcome to MVP the Master's Voice podcast. Thank you so much Pavan, it is a pleasure to be on this podcast. Thank you Midula for your time and you know for all the patience and thanks also to Ravindra Samant and Nimisha Mathur of Adfactors PR for having made this interaction possible. Some excellent coordination and support there. You're in good hands. But before we begin our conversation, Midula, allow me to introduce you to my listeners. My distinguished guest on this episode of MVP, the Master's Voice podcast, is Midula Devabhaktani, Chief Marketing Officer and Co-Founder Midi, where she leads and manages the marketing and sales part of the organization. Midula graduated from Jawaharlal Nehru Technical University, Andhra Pradesh in 2008 and moved to the United States to pursue a Master's in Computer Science from Florida State University from where she later took an MBA degree too. Creative, pragmatic and a proactive problem solver, Midula started her career as a software engineer with Xerox in 2011. After working with the company for two and a half years, Midula moved to a financial firm Raymond James in 2014 as a software engineer. After working with the company for a year and a half, Midula decided to quit and return to India in 2015. In October 2015, Midula along with her husband Vishwanath Gandula founded Midi, which he leads as CEO and co-founder with Midula who is CMO and co-founder. Today, Mivi is making a solid impact in the consumer wearables electronic segment because as Midula herself averts, the Mivi products, all of which are built locally, are better than any international brand and that people are vocal for local. Midula also shares a belief that Mivi's Made in India products are poised to change the face of consumer electronics across wearables and more categories in India over the next few years. Because, well, Midula's one mantra for Mivi is No one can promote your product better than a happy customer. And Mivi, as Midula says, and I definitely agree, is thriving on that count. So that's a brief introduction to Midula Devabhaktani, Chief Marketing Officer and Co-Founder Mivi, my distinguished guest on this episode of MVP, the Master's Voice Podcast. So Midula... Welcome once again to MVP, the Master's Voice podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Midula. And before we start our, you know, the regular Q&A, Midula, I said when I was introducing you to my listeners right in the beginning that Mivi is doing some amazing work in the consumer electronics space. Let me tell my listeners why I think so, and then we can get on to our conversation. First, Mivi is, as it says, striving to take the Indian electronics gadgets industry to the next level by fulfilling the need for high-quality electronic gadgets at affordable prices in the Indian market. And no, that's not boilerplate speak. Mivi is actually doing that and brilliantly well. And I'll share why I say so too in a bit. But let me also add that Mivi is not just importing, rebranding and peddling Chinese or other imported goods to India, but, and here's what I love, it is selling products that are manufactured in India in its own facilities in the country. And it is selling wearable consumer products which are very highly in demand and with 5G coming in and, you know, a lot of hybrid working from home, etc. They're going to be extremely relevant. And the products are across categories like, let me see, headphones, speakers, soundbars, smartwatches and the accessories and cables to keep them charged and going full steam ahead. And the clincher is the quality. I've tried only one product there, speaker, soundbar, a 200 watt model that actually beat my Blaupunk model and I will name it not because I mean any disrespect but well, that's what happened. It beat my Blaupunk model that also has Dolby on clarity and separations even at higher volumes and equally better presence at lower volume too. Not in a test lab, I tested it with my ears trained on decades of obsession with sound. Mivi is rocking it in India and truly in the days of the noise generated by the boats at all of the world is creating true value for India. 
So Mizla, it's wonderful to have you here. And my first question to you is: Tell me very briefly about your career before you set up Nidhi. And in fact, what drove you and Viswanath, your husband, both of you, to quit your comfortable jobs in the U.S. and return to India to start Nidhi? So I and Viswanath were always interested in starting a business, and uh, it has been a dream of ours. Okay. It was a conscious decision that we wanted to study in the U.S. for a couple of years, come back. and do something in our own country okay on one of our trips we've uh, noticed that you know we were we were trying to buy a couple of electronic accessories we couldn't find anything good mm. there were one or two international brands available but uh, we had to search hard for them one and even when we could find them if we were paying 10 dollars in the us here they were charging a premium of 20 or 25 dollars oh boy or they were at that time they used to be called smuggled goods you know uh, cheap goods uh, accessories available but they didn't have any certifications they were not genuine and they could damage end up damaging your phone okay so we said this is a space where there is not a good indian brand making products for the indian consumer and also at an affordable price right why should we pay up for some brand that's already 50% cheaper somewhere else mm. so it didn't make sense for us so that's how we've decided to come back and start maybe okay so midila when did you start maybe and you know the thought of okay we there's an opportunity here and there's a need also and it was sort of fitting with your past experience and the fact that you also wanted to become entrepreneurs in india and do something for the in the indian space so you thought of the idea of you know okay you identified your space of consumer electronics gadgets when did that thought of starting something fructify and take the form of maybe which started addressing and facing consumers for the first time what was the time gap like what was the effort like that went into it i just wanted to bring out the fact that you know i know that you all are doing amazingly well now but were there any hiccups were there any doubts in the beginning and it might serve as inspiration for uh, other or even younger entrepreneurs who have dreams in the rise so tell us the early days pavan entrepreneurship is uh, you know a scary journey and especially given that uh, we both had uh, i had an amazingly good job and visnat already had a business set up in the us okay so we were married so you know it was not we that we could even go back and rely on our parents <laughs> a fact once you're married you lose the cushion immediately yeah. so it was a scary step to take sure 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 but it was something we always wanted to do hmm. and uh, we had earnings that we put aside for a couple of years hmm. we came back 2015 hmm. July 2015 to be more precise hmm. and then uh, almost took a year okay. to put into R&D hmm. on day 1 we wanted hmm. to start manufacturing the products here we went around the country okay met with uh, you know different people uh, studied the market and then realized there wasn't even a single manufacturing company in all of india in this particular category So forget about an engineer hmm. and even hire a technician that has that skill. Okay. So after realizing that, we started uh, developing, identifying what are the problems with the current or existing products at that point of time. We've uh, hmm. done a thorough market analysis and also figured out solutions and developed a product saying what is a product that will solve the existing problem and why is it different from anything already in the market. Okay. so in fact uh, mizula you demonstrated the desire to actually explore and investigate not only the pain points but also the solutions and you also preempted my next question which is you said you met people across the country what kind of people were they consumers what kind of parts or geographies in the country uh, did you meet them in and uh, what were the problem areas that you found for which you said yes when we come out we will not only manufacture products but we will also bring products that answer these and solve these pain points tell me so we've tried to find uh, we've spoken to multiple engineers at uh, you know different consumer electronic companies okay they weren't particularly into audio because like i said there was no audio manufacturing company mm. 
but these were engineers trying to resolve consumer issues and we've also uh, met a lot of consumers themselves trying to identify what is it that they like they don't like about what's existing okay and we've traveled across we've uh, done focus group studies in uh, multiple cities okay we've uh, also thoroughly done a thorough analysis and research about all the products with the reviews available online what the, you know that's the biggest database and is available to anybody mm. that you could go on to an amazon or a flipkart and look at the thousands and thousands of reviews and what are people saying about that particular product mm. we bought every single product in the market okay we've uh, broke it down we've tested it thoroughly identified why a problem might be arising amazing amazing so which brings me to my next question okay returning to india and starting your own manufacturing facility would have required a huge investment and then you went about picking up everything and trying it yourself to not only to sort of probably add a greater understanding to what you got as feedback from engineers and consumers alike about products and their quality so how did you proceed were there any challenges that you faced for the investments i'm sure you probably put your entire savings from glorious careers well high paying careers and jobs in the us into this but tell me a little more about that whatever is shareable you know on how you cope with the investment requirements sure sure see this is a question uh, we get asked a lot and also when i meet a uh, wanna be entrepreneurs or youngsters the biggest thing they say is you know we don't have somebody funding us hmm. we don't have uh, investors uh, trying to take a bet on our idea right we didn't rely on any investors nor we had that mindset that we want investment we didn't even reach out to our family hmm. uh, whatever we could save we figured out how much i mean we've saved a considerable amount but uh, we were willing to bet hmm. everything and we started with a smaller category of charging okay which doesn't require a bigger investment like an audio uh, category so from that small investment we kept on building on top of it so i think that you know money is never a barrier it it's very hard to get or you know to put money into it but it is never a barrier if you have the will you'll figure out a way mm. you don't have to start the biggest you don't have to enter 10 categories at once right you can figure out what works for you start there and you know keep consistently building on it year on year so that was our journey mm. investment so far i would say not just on day one but even till date midula when you started in 2015 you came back in july and you thought of maybe right and then when did the first manufacturing facility come up where did it come up and uh, how has it grown so far where all are you available in india as far as manufacturing is concerned so uh, we weren't able to start manufacturing when we came back uh, we went across and then realized we can't we couldn't find expertise in that field nor did i or viswanath have any manufacturing experience so we started with importing products okay but what we parallelly did was we never just bought products in china and white labeled them mm. we used to figure out uh, the pain points and then you know work together with suppliers to come up with a solution and parallelly we were building teams in india okay we started with a design team we built a tech team so year on year it took us 5 years to build a strong team okay. and in 2020 december was when we started manufacturing in india amazing and what did you start with the manufacturing i mean you said that you started maybe with lower costing and easier to sort of buy and sell the charging products and accessories what did you start manufacturing when you first started manufacturing in your facility in 2020 The first product we made was a Bluetooth speaker. It's called Roam 2. Okay. It is still the, you know, it's been launched almost two years before, and it is still the best-selling speaker everywhere. Wow. It uh, has amazing reviews. Most beautiful product. Wow. Amazing tech specs. So that was the first product we launched, mm. and then we moved on to now everything that maybe has the whole portfolio mm. is hundred percent made in India at our facility. But not just made in India; it is designed and developed in India. Amazing. So, Pavan, let me add one more thing real quick here. 
we get asked this question a lot why are you making in india and i always ask people why not make in india we want to show mivi is a brand that is our success but avishkaran the manufacturing unit is a pride for us we say it with pride that yes india can make it we want to show the world that india can make it we don't need to depend on a foreign country to fulfill our requirements wonderful wonderful that's another matter of pride so yeah you didn't name a country but i will say india can do it we don't need the chinese <laughs> and i guess that perhaps one super complex chip or something or the other that might be at the heart of whatever you do or an important part might need to be imported because it's not manufactured anywhere in india uh, is that the case i mean eventually you might get some essentials from out abroad wherever they are available and then the rest of it all is completely designed and tested and you know and then manufactured and supplied in india am i right yes yes see uh we still don't have a very strong component manufacturing ecosystem for this category okay also because you know uh, we are the first ones to start manufacturing in this category and one of the biggest okay brands that start manufacturing then a component manufacturers ecosystem will start here it's a backward integration that needs to happen so as more brands mm. take this route of saying no we'll only manufacture in india the more uh, component uh, you know somebody will start venturing into components so yes some parts are still imported but it is also but the core of this is the actual design and r&d and uh, that knowledge is being done in india mm. no the best thing that you've done medula is that you have actually started building this category you launched the category of consumer gadgets manufacturing in india and that's really a wonderful thing tell me your entire portfolio of products right now across the four categories that i mentioned what is the total number of products that you actually are manufacturing in india what are the number of pin codes to which you supply them through including the amazons and the other online uh sales portal of the world and your own mivi.in which is an amazing beautiful nice simple but very nicely designed website and i think everybody should go there because essentially they also receive a lovely discount percentage <laughs> of that which is how i got my speaker so tell me how many products categories that you are manufacturing in india so mivi is currently in the tws earphones Bluetooth speakers, sound bars, and smart wearable smart watches categories. Hmm. Every single product of Mivi is manufactured in India. So all SKUs combine somewhere between 120 to 150 uh, SKUs. Wonderful! And your manufacturing facility is how strong? Where? It's based in Hyderabad. I'm actually sitting in the manufacturing facility right now. Okay. We have uh, a strong team of 1,500 people. and wow yeah we have a capacity to manufacture between 25000 to 40000 products per day amazing amazing this is truly wonderful and you know i can say this i know it for a fact i've compared uh, reviews and everything else and when a big online major uh, sponsors a product that product gets the highest number of you know positive reviews and everything else i've seen that and it's no coincidence it might be absolutely factually correct and i'm not imputing anything but it's too much of a coincidence that every sponsor product has the highest number of thousands <laughs> of ratings and five star reviews but i've seen that maybe products are not sponsored on any portal uh, or not specially pushed or promoted but the lowest review stars number of stars is an average between 4 and 4.3 which is wonderful the quality is impeccable as far as whatever i have consumed and tested is concerned as a pure layman who's not an engineer like you and secondly the cost is amazing the cost difference price difference is really really good and it absolutely sort of put spade to any desire to pick up something from the gray market mm. because you've got gray market prices and fabulous certified guaranteed for one year kind of quality from a product brand and category which is made in india making for india and i am sure and that's my next question <laughs> mithila 
uh when are the and i'm not saying this from any knowledge but the noises and the and the boards and the others of the world going to come to you with which i mean is other wholesale importers of imported products white labeling them and selling them when are they going to come to you and say you know what we love the quality we love your production capabilities and facilities please manufacture for us and we'll white label our own stuff that's going to happen for sure <laughs> uh, you don't have to name any brands but tell me if those something like that is on the plans so pavan i'll also before i answer this question i want to touch base on one thing you've said you know we are able to do amazing quality at a very affordable price hmm. that is because that's the whole goal of mivi from day one product has been our core and we said why do we want to make it we want to make a great product which is affordable and that's why your and is is at still our goal right and then to answer your question uh not naming any brands but we have been already approached by uh hmm. multiple international and domestic brands okay asking us to make your products for them not now it's been a year since they've been approaching us hmm. just because the quality that mivi is able to do here and without any partnerships with foreign ventures hmm. is outstanding and our products in themselves are speaking for it so you know we have already been approached and mivi does have plans to do it hmm. however our teams so busy with their own growth that we've entered a lot of categories we've gone from a production capacity of one line 70 people to today 1500 and 15 lines in less than 80 wow so we're expanding as fast as we can mm. but yes you know second half of 2023 or first half of 2024 is when i think we'll pick up at least one or two brands that we'll manufacture also for wow so your current capacity like you said is around 40 or 1000 products being manufactured every single day right hmm. so by how much spare capacity do you have for manufacturing now and are you also going to look at new categories to be manufactured by and for mivi and provided to indians across the country so see it is not just a uh, production capacity that it is dependent on hmm. it is also dependent on the number of the research and development team you know the number of products um, they are able to come up with okay that is also a limit mm. because we are not just bringing products from another country by breaking it into a couple of parts and together here <laughs> yes 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 and you recently also launched your smart watches the first brand right the first model yes and i believe it's doing pretty well too it's doing amazing yeah tell me more about that and then you can talk about the other categories So uh, we've just launched the first uh, smartwatch from Mivi hmm. and it's doing amazingly well and uh, completely built in India and we have a market disruptive plan for it there are a lot of developments software firmware and product wise that are happening in that category hmm. we have been looking at the category as you know how can we don't want to launch just another me too product hmm. just like with the category we launch into we look at how can we disrupt this market what is it that we can bring at that affordable price that would give the consumer a completely amazing experience and value so i don't want to reveal too no no don't <laughs> because there's a lot of uh, in that particular category that's going to come up this year and uh, you know 6 months down the line i would be more than happy to show you all the different launches that have been done wonderful wonderful more strength to you also tell me you know chinese products will push up individual private user data to some cloud in outside of india so how do you sort of ensure that those privacy concerns are never raised by any user in india so uh, the advantage we have is mivi is also in charge of the firmware and the software of the product so we are setting up servers in india okay and our you know they will be encrypted data that will be stored in our own servers versus when you're using a chinese app that is you know redesigned and just uh, put a cover on for to use in india to white label it to white label it then the data is automatically being sent back to china correct correct so that is a huge huge uh, usb and also a big concern for it absolutely medula from market guesstimates estimates not from data that you may have shared with me you haven't but i want to ask you you know in india there are 
two brands that are sort of well known because of the aggressive marketing and the head start they've had on Mivi in terms of first entry or earlier entry than you all but Mivi is today amongst the top 3 firmly ensconced amongst the top 3 brands in India and the only one i think amongst those top 3 which is manufacturing in India for India with every kind of guarantee and superb comparable even better quality right i mean i haven't I tried maybe products across all the categories but wherever I have I am truly delighted and I think that you're going to be adding enormous value for everybody as the 5G expansion happens as smartphones keep getting cheaper infrastructure keeps getting bigger and wider my son went off to Manali and uh, Jio was the only network that was available to him in the hills on the lee word on the <laughs> <laughs> tower word sides and it was amazing and when this kind of stuff happens when smartphones get cheaper and cheaper you know with much better capabilities at the prices of feature phones right that is where the high growth markets are for india and for me we so where are you today when you compare yourself with you know the other brands and where do you see yourself say 3 years down the line so one uh, at maybe we don't look at competition we think there is no competition okay because our focus is different what we want to do with the brand is different okay we want to be a product brand that makes amazing products hmm. and we're not worried about the market share okay we keep gaining market share and you know are right now in the top 3 just because of the product and our focus on the product again you know where do we see ourselves rather than say 3 years down the lane let me tell you what is our ultimate vision oh great tell me so we want to be a tech company from india what i mean by that is you know if i take some names why do we if you're taking the you know software sector for example we have great companies indian companies like an infosys uh you know like an accenture absolutely but uh why don't we have a google why don't we have a meta hmm. similarly in the tech space you know we want to be that company a decade 15 years down the lane that is making disruptive tech and with your capabilities with your complete investment in tech in research in design it's going to be amazing uh and you know you can actually be producing for the world also so really i mean you know you could have probably if you were just an importer you could have set up your entire company and worked with maybe just about 50 to 100 people but here you're employing 1500 you've added infrastructure capacity capability you are actually providing great promise of growth to india which is now emerging from covid and needs greater infra greater spending and the value and the products and the quality and the prices at which you are offering them these are fast moving consumer electronic gadgets they are they are and you're doing amazing work so i salute you for that really great great potential thank you so much all right now let's come to you know what you do every day to make sure that the world and its aunt knows about mivi and its amazing products like marketing so what are the most important mediums who are your target groups of course there are the customers the consumers that is the end consumers but what about corporates what about entities that have to hr heads etc that have to sort of arm their uh, workers working from home with the kind of gadgetry or you know consumer gadgets that are required the wearables to work efficiently and you know with 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 the best kind of comfort ease of use and uh, let's say uh, productivity which is the result of the first two that i named what do you do who are your tgs and how do you market yourself very good question you asked me i generally get a lot of questions on marketing for the consumer for which you know it's we use a lot of uh, digital media hmm. because we have been primarily an online focused brand sure we use uh, media uh, all kinds of social media word of mouth has been amazing for us referrals has worked out amazing for us and the reviews on portals gives customer the confidence that yes the product is you know 
great and I would want to have the product. Mm. But a very interesting question that you asked me about corporates. We've recently built a team purely for corporates because when corporates realized that maybe was a brand that is making in India, mm. we have been getting lots of requests. Mm. Also, you know, with our capabilities that we can customize for corporates, you know, we could make it more personalized for their employees, for for their gifting purposes. We have been getting lots of requests last year. So now we've put together a team mm. that is very specifically working on building that ecosystem where it is a pride for all of us. Absolutely. You know, when we see a product being used by everybody and we've interestingly enough have been receiving the same kind of response from people that are using it. They're like, you know, oh, I'm so proud to be using a product that's made in India, that was built in India. Lovely. So I think it's this year it's going to be an amazing story that we'll be able to tell about corporates also. Wonderful. And, you know, I honestly think you should go out to the market and tell them that, you know, anybody who talks the purpose talk should also walk it. And how many brands in India can say that we try to use uh, most of the stuff that we try to use must be and is made in India? Because, see, I mean, nobody will want to compromise on quality because something is made in India. And there should never be any compromise because Indians are amazing uh, and, and, and and the best uh, amongst the most capable in the world. So if you have that quality and that kind of investment in India and emotional investedness in the good of Indian society, then why not buy and use, gift, recommend products made in India, you know? So I think that's your biggest USP. Interestingly enough, I think you're you're absolutely right. They are actually, corporates are really interested in supporting Indian companies. But the catch being that the quality should be on par with international standards or above international standards. Absolutely. And we've seen it personally that once people realized, oh, these guys are making better products in the market. And plus, they are an Indian company that's manufacturing here. Uh, we weren't focused on uh, corporates and still we were getting too many inquiries. It is people reaching out to us versus <laughs> we reaching out to them. Amazing. So I think that uh, support, not just from corporates, uh, every day we receive several emails, messages on social media from consumers mm. telling us that I can't believe this is made in India. Mm. I'm so happy to be owning an Indian product. People posting on stories mentioning that guys support me be like you know mm. not a paid collab like random consumers posting support me be it's our Indian brand it has amazing quality correct so it is up to the brands to make sure that you are giving them the product that they can rally behind mm. and that they can you know that they're impressed with mm. then I believe that the whole nation and not just corporates are individuals everybody is willing to walk the talk and you know take that bet on India Absolutely. In fact, I'll tell you this. I myself have told a lot of people about the maybe speakers that I've been using. And I think they are truly amazing. That's so kind of you, Bhavan. <laughs> when Media Brief uh, does its small level of corporate gifting, we will most probably go only with maybe products. Because, you know, we also like to associate with uh, not just good people, but the good work that they do through the good products that they make you know, out of an investedness in India. So truly amazing, you know, and it's truly wonderful talking to you today, Mithila. Tell me, uh, what about third-party cookies, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in digital marketing? They're going to die off, but of course, then the two big bullies of the internet are trying to sort of delay their demise hmm. as much as possible. I won't name those two big bullies. But third-party cookies should have gone out and died uh, ever since uh, Safari came out with those, uh, you know, with all its inbuilt actions against third-party cookies. But then now I I sense that even, you know, it is probably dragging its heels or maybe I'm wrong and that's an unjustified criticism. But how do you, I mean, you must have a very big database, right? Because everybody who buys from you is already sort of opted in to your network, your digital approaches, etc. 
how important a part of your digital marketing is dark social which is as you know whatsapp the encrypted messengers because uh, in i think 2019 some of the best top digital marketers across the world were approached by hootsuite which asked those uh, marketers that tell us the top 5 trends in digital marketing and around 80 plus percent of those 3200 odd marketers who used all the top hootsuite services which are very highly cost which are very costly they all said about 82% or more said that nearly 50% of my digital marketing budget is spent on dark social like whatsapp and telegram and signal and you know facebook messenger so how important is uh, whatsapp to you in terms of you know spreading the word about new products and categories see uh, for us it's extremely important and that is um, a big space we are in because uh, you know that's where our target audience are right they are no longer sitting in front of a tv and watching movies they are not um, you know reading newspapers they are on their phones they are on their phones they are browsing social media they are reading news via apps you know they are e right so it is obviously every company wants to figure out the right medium to get to its target audience right which would be much more beneficial than randomly putting up a coding somewhere and expecting brand recall mm. so it, it is extremely crucial for us but how i look at it is you know using versus abusing when you have consumer data and you give them the choice to say first guys do you are you interested in knowing about the updates about you know new launches about sales coming up giving them that option and also giving them that option to opt out if they feel like i'm no longer interested sure i see that as the more ethical way mm. than just spamming people left and right no absolutely right midula i mean it is assumed and presumed rather that the moment somebody buys something and says yes this is my number this is my address and uh, you can connect me on or give them the choice there itself when they are opting in and sharing their details and i'm sure every marketer does that ethically but it's also uh, very good to know that you are conscious about the fact that you know uh, less is more and uh, opted in doesn't mean you know hemmed in by <laughs> multiple messages and they can always unsubscribe so yeah correct see and also a category right it is not a category where you bought a speaker today that you would want to buy another speaker next month or you know something else in another electronics the month after correct so you have to be conscious about your category too and say okay hmm. frequency is so much let me not just spam my user every other day saying that here you go i have this you know just be there hmm. when you think when they think that uh yes i need something just be in their mind that they'll come back to you mm. but you don't have to you know <laughs> have their lives keep hammering at their yeah. door <laughs> until they unsubscribe and say never again with this brand oh god we don't want that do we <laughs> So what opportunities do you see in the sector in the coming years uh, Pavan Electronics is an amazing sector it is a sector that doesn't die down it only keeps changing right we've gone from radio to phones today in terms of listening mm. gone from wired earphones or even no earphones to now TWS so the sector only keeps changing mm. and it is very important that Maybe or any other electronics brand is keeping in pace with the changes in tech and is striving to make better products for the consumer. Mm. I also foresee we entering into a lot of new categories over the next few years. Our R and D team right now is simultaneously working on at least six, seven new categories. So we've actually already. done the smart audio watches we didn't launch it into the market okay because uh, you know it is what is available today in the market is not really usable it is bulkier okay you wouldn't wear that bulk of a glasses all day long every day 
it it is just going to be a novelty for a couple of days and people would stop using it so our team that is one of the categories we are working on and we are trying to refine it so that it is hmm. as thin as your regular glasses but it is not bulky that it will become an obstruction in itself so lots of more categories you are working on the opportunity is huge you also have your own research r&d center your manufacturing facilities 1500 plus employees including a lot of engineers design experts tech geeks and tech professionals and of course a lot a lot of feedback from thousands upon thousands of consumers so any time you see a new product that comes in you just take it you do a complete knockdown <laughs> get right into the entrails and figure out how it works beautifully and how you can make it better so you really are armed to the teeth to actually pick up anything that's really nice or perhaps even create your own uh, products which are tweaked and beautifully manufactured for india which is another important aspect so wonderful amazing work that you guys have been doing uh, mithila and viswanath mevi you have scaled great heights maybe has the brand and all the praise for maybe's accomplishments goes to the two of you and the way you built your teams how would you both define your work chemistry how do you divide your work and you know what are the operations i know you are the cmo and you are into reaching out and connecting and building emotional and whatever else awareness bridges with consumers but what are the operations that you both look at see and how do you manage the work and does it impact the home space <laughs> tell me we have great chemistry mm-hmm. i and vishnath have been spending 24 by 7 with each other i think for the past 8 years Touch. so because either we are at the office we are at home and we are together <laughs> yeah so we are both very independent people also and we have our own strengths mm. we are both um, you know respective of uh, or respect the other person's space recognize what their str- we know for a fact not recognize we both have very different strengths mm. i'm a super creative person i love creativity and that's the reason i've picked up marketing okay and then there are different things i do quite well i also have a degree in dance uh, i uh, I'm a professional classical dancer so wow. I have the ear for music. Okay. Uh you know I personally fine tune all the signature curves and test nice the audio signature of every product. So I have my own strengths which comes from you know an electronics background. is super super um, strong in tech mm. he understands every component of uh, is passionate about electronics he loves building things so that's his core strength so we respect each other's strengths and you know we take that step back and say okay this is your department mm. we discuss but we will say you know if there is a conflict we'll say okay this is your department let you be let you take the fun I will defer to you. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful. Okay, one question. A youngster comes to you, okay? New, just out of college, engineering or MBA or whatever else it is, wants to work with you. So, what is it? I mean, HR has checked all the boxes, yeah, qualification, experience, fresher, this that or the other. Everything seems good. Go and meet Midula ma'am. What is it that you look for uh, in anyone? very young fresh or experienced who wants to join and work with you see two different things for somebody young and um, a fresher the two things we look for is the zeal to work and learn and being smart we don't look at education we don't look at qualification because i find it a little bit irrelevant if you have the zeal to learn you'll figure it out you know what you learn in your education is not what you actually do when you're working hmm. so you have to have that passion to you know just jump in get things going you know read your courses hmm. sit with seniors absorb things in and you have to be smart enough to understand what is being told to you so those are the only two things for in freshers okay with senior positions obviously experience matters hmm. you know that brings in a lot of structure and also guidance for the team along with that ownership is super important for us you will have to 
own up and take responsibility of the department your work and everybody under you mm. you know you can't uh, if anything goes wrong get me the the first thing i or vishnath will always say is i should have done something so that it wouldn't have gone wrong and we tell mm. the management the same thing don't point the finger the other way around first point it towards you and say what is it that you should have done you know even if somebody is not working maybe you should have monitored them better you must have guided them better mm. because then you will build a team then you will build belongingness versus if you're just trying to pass off the blame when some things go wrong it it won't be a healthy work culture absolutely absolutely respond responsibly and don't react irresponsibly frankly correct <laughs> and i think that's also very very important to take people along because through that process what happens is teamwork gets built and when you're discussing something and asking for views and opinions it's not a an echo chamber of yes men or yes people you know people will be free and frank and able and encouraged to speak their minds correct and you see if you're not a leader that can take criticism now then your brand will never grow absolutely because uh, you you are too deep into it you won't see the outside picture and also we have this habit of you know anybody joining me after the first month we ask them especially people coming in at senior levels because they will have a lot of experience before we'll ask them what is it that can be and that should be done it better it may be because they're coming in with a fresh set of eyes sure they'll see every and every organization has things it can improve upon and we want to learn that we want to incorporate mm. that so that we become stronger correct correct so that's some feedback we take and try to incorporate as much as possible from all the insights of their experience yeah absolutely wonderful well mizila i truly enjoyed my conversation with you and putting together this episode of mvp the masters voice podcast on mediabrief.com what did you think of our chat so far Oh it was a free flowing easy flowing conversation I could just be myself like they said you're the OG of podcasts so I get it Oh god you're very kind and really it was wonderful to talk to you uh, Midula and thank you ever 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 so much for your time Thanks for having me Pawan it was such a blast to be on the <laughs> Master's Voice podcast and I've heard a lot of podcasts before of yours and it's an absolute pleasure to also finally get the chance to talk to you i should say <laughs> and it, it's such an amazing podcast and uh, wishing you lots more success in this journey and thank you so much for bringing in lots of entrepreneurs you know into light oh medula you do great work you're very very kind and generous thank you very much indeed for your kind words and while i am at it thanks also once again to ravindra samant and uh, Nimisha Mathur of Ad Factors PR for having made this interaction possible. Midula Deva Bhaktuni or Midula as she is popularly known, CMO and co-founder of Mavi was my distinguished guest on this episode of MVP The Master's Voice podcast on mediabrief.com. I found the conversation extremely inspiring, very, very insightful and I hope it will inspire everybody who wants to start something up of their own and also professionals and even her more senior in age peers and professionals across the market so as i said i hope you found it inspiring i certainly did till we meet again in the next episode of mvp the master's voice podcast from mediabrief.com this is your host and friend pavan arshavla saying take care stay safe stay tuned and connected bye bye 